Praise the Lord. I am so excited about the Word of God this morning. Thank you so very much to all of our faithful viewers from all nations everywhere and beyond for paying attention to what God has been speaking expressly as we land on the digital landscape declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been in a very, very, very intense time, but we have also been seeing signs and symptoms of revival. The travail that is upon the earth is proof that something is being born that we've not seen before. So I want to challenge you to get excited, to get focused, and to prepare for what I'm calling the road to revival. I sincerely believe that from now until the other side of Pentecost, God is changing things in the earth, and I believe that we're going to see a harvest of souls that we've not seen in this century. So thank you so much again for tuning in. Also to those of you that have been diligent with your giving, I want to honor you, and I want to thank God for you and speak blessings to your storehouses that because of your faithfulness and your diligence that God is going to set you up in such a way where you're going to become the distributors of the next day. Today, we're going into the Word of God, into a very, very, very timely Kairos message. And our scripture is going to be found in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to read for you verses 1 through 14. Last week, we ended our message with a profound international declaration called be the body and now we're listening for wisdom out of the scriptures concerning what it looks like to be the body that's what we need right now we need the body of Jesus Christ the body of Christ the conglomerate the the tandem operation and joining of the body of Christ in Paul's letter to the Corinthian church there is a massive amount of insight and information concerning something that is extremely important in these days. And what he gives us in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, is a roadmap and a protocol for the operations of the Spirit of God. Before we go into our text, I'd like to exhort you and remind you that one of the functions of the Spirit of God is to uphold but also preserve the body. He is to uphold it, he is to present it and broadcast it. And so whenever you're dealing with God's plan for the body of Christ, you're dealing with the governing agency of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit uses to govern, to rule in the world through the body of Christ. Christ. And I love the ministry of the Apostle Paul because he has a very classic literary structure when reaching to the churches that are under his apostolic see. Those that came out of him reported to him and were accountable to him, but he instructed them didactically. He gave them information about how to approach the grace of God, how to understand the mystery of being the body, and how to also understand that in Jesus Christ, it will no longer be the division between Jew and Gentile. Paul received this revelation during a study period, an encounter period in the desert called Arabia, where God downloaded to him mysteries and God downloaded to him information concerning the era that I believe you and I live in. And what the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 12 is a fundamental uh, 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 issue of supernatural activity. The the diverse types of it and kinds. And I want to now just go through this and expodulate this to let you know why this is important for you and I right now. Number Verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 12, Paul says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Very normal to Paul's style, combating ignorance is an apostolic responsibility. Wherever you're going to see the real ministry of an apostle or the ministry of a sent one, you're going to find a ravenous hatred for po the power of ignorance. Because apostolic ministry is revelatory ministry, Jesus told the 12, I will give you a voice and wisdom that your adversary would not be able to ignore, which means that one of the primary functions of both apostles and prophets is to unfold and give birth to, to convey the mystery realm of God. And he tells them, I don't want you 
ignorant. And I want to give you some synonyms for that. It means to be unlearned, to ignore, to avoid, to consider not significant. And right now, what we are going to see in the earth is a massive clash between the force of revelation and the power of ignorance. There have been very, very many streams around the body of Christ that have been complacent. Oh, yes. That have been uh, 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 comfortable in willful ignorance. But what you don't know is killing us. What you don't know is harming us. And so I believe what we're pressing into now is a new realm of revelation, the seven spirits of God, the intel of the most high coming into the earth to reveal his heart and his mind. So Paul says concerning spiritual gifts, it's not a matter that you should evade or avoid. And here's why. He says, you know that you were Gentiles and you were carried away by dumb idols, even as you were led. So now as we unpack this next statement by the Apostle Paul, he reveals to us that one of the things that idolatry does is birth a dumbness, a deafness, that wherever there is an idol, there is no real talking. There is no real communication. He says, and you are carried away by the dumb idol. I, I want you to see this parallel here. It's interesting to know that Paul writes that previously Gentile, nat Gentile nature was to be led away by that that can't speak, to be drawn astray by that that doesn't even have a voice. I believe that God is bringing us right now into the re-discipling of the eye and the ear and the mouth. And I also believe that we're confronted in America right now with idolatry and what it does. Beloved, listen, idolatry is not just the bowing to physical statues and bowing to items. Idolatry is a position and a decision even of the heart. And whenever you've got idolatry, you're going to be missing out on significant information because your life is leadership based. Your life is the byproduct of whoever and whatever you're following. And so in verse three, he says, wherefore, I give you to understand hallelujah that no man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost another principle he gives us is that one of the things that the spirit of God does is magnify is remind is uphold the fact that Jesus is Lord the preeminent lordship of the man Jesus Christ is what comes out of the realm of the Holy Holy Ghost's messages to the planet. Now, as we go through this in 1 Corinthians 12, round about four now, I want to show you a change that is the meat of what I want to teach you today. Paul said, now there are diversities of gifts, hey, but the same spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. In the next verse, he says, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. What he shows us is that the diversities or the diverse manifestation of the gifts is also a pleasure of of the Spirit of God. And right now, even in America, I believe with every fiber of my being, we are in the day of divinely forced diversity, where gifts are going to start to function much differently than they ever have. And we're not just talking about ministry gifts. We're talking about the full spectrum of the cerebral capacity of the human mind and spirit. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, one of the things he does is he wakens up regions of your brain that you didn't use before. Areas of your intelligent self that you were unaccustomed. He awakens the mind in a way that you've never seen before or experienced before. And I believe right now we're about to see a diverse gambit of the gifts, the gifts of the spirit. Now in verse 5 he says, and there are also differences of administration, but the same Lord. What this means is that we may share a similar gift or gift type, but the way it manifests, the way 
way it express itself is different assignment to assignment. What it means is that the administration that your gifting is going to flow in is going to be predicated upon where you're called to go, who you're called to reach, and what you're called to do. I prophesy that there is a new coming in of the different diverse administrations of the operations. It's going to be operations and administrations that break into the earth. In verse 7, he says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What he's implying is there is divine profitability that happens when men and women are stirred in the gifts of the Spirit. When they're stirred in their gift, somebody is going to profit and, and they're going to benefit. They're going to prosper. They will be enhanced as we're doing it. Now, I love going into the definition of the gifts of the Spirit because I believe by the Holy Ghost that as you're watching me, your gifts are being revived. Your gifts are being resuscitated. I don't want you to just use this quiet time to just sit at home and do nothing. You need to be stirred up even in your inner man to re-engage gifts you abandon, to pick up abilities you abandon, to pick up and sharpen and master the things that are in the belly. He says in the next verse, in, in the verse, he says in verse 8, for to one is given the spirit by the spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of wisdom. And this is the supernatural ability to know what's coming from the future. This is not good advice. This is not sound counsel. It's the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom, the gift of wisdom, wisdom may produce sound advice. It may produce counsel even, but those are diverse administrations of the gift of the word of wisdom. The gift of the word of wisdom is a very unique gift because what it is, is it's predictive in nature and it's born and what it functions is as a defense for whatever is coming, a defense for the unknown. A defense for the coming days, a defense for the years that you've not been on. God is trying to protect your future. He is interested in standing in guardianship over what he's got planned for you. He's very much so concerned. His passion is getting you out of where you've been to where he designed you to go. That's why he sent his son. That's why he gave us a new covenant. And so what wisdom is, is a divine resource that, that, that is like the antenna that connects us to day-to-day -day steps and preparedness for what we don't know about the future. And then he gives us the word of knowledge. This is the supernatural ability to know what the mind cannot know, to perceive facts, things that exist, issues that exist. I believe the word of knowledge is the forensic power of the spirit of God, not just to read hearts and minds, but to also solve crime, to also uh, solve issues that make the heart weak, issues that make the heart unstable, issues that come and challenge it, and then the word of knowledge has a very powerful way of confronting the heart. It has a very powerful way of opening the heart of receptivity. Right now, if you flow in the gifts of the spirit, in the streets, on your job, it's an important time to let people know that Jesus knows who and where they are. To know that he knows their name, their need, their nature. It's an important time to flow even in the word of knowledge. I just feel uh, a strong impartation for release, the, the authority that the Lord has given me in the realms of revelation, for the gift of the word of knowledge to begin to flow in your life, for the gift of the word of knowledge to turn on in your dreams, like it was with Samuel and Daniel, even like it was with Elijah, the gift of the word of knowledge, so that you will be able to be a minister of reconciliation between God and man, the people in your circle, the people in your family, even your children, the power of the word of knowledge. It's a manifestation of protection. And then he says to another, the gifts of healing, the gifts of healing, the gifts of healing have a plurality. They don't just manifest in one way. I believe deliverance ministry is a form of the gift of healing. I believe counseling is a form of the gift of healing. Some even with medical gifts, medical interests and passions may be operating under a gift of healing. I believe comedy, uh, uh, those that laugh and bring joy to the heart, they manifest a gift of healing. But we cannot allow 
what America has gone through to position us in such disbelief in the healing power of Jesus Christ. Healing is the heritage, the, 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 the inheritance. Healing is the right of every believer. It is the right. And so I want to just encourage all of you watching me, if you're sick, if somebody's around you to sick, uh, is sick or in pain, come out of agreement with what you feel and contend for your healing. Contend for your healing. Contend for your healing in every realm of your body, in every realm of your life, in every realm of your experience right now. Don't allow this to break you, but fight for your healing. It is the nature, the culture of Christianity. And then he says to another, the working of miracles. If there was ever a time where we needed to see the dark side, the weight, the, the, the proof, the, the way we see the handiwork of God is the might of God through miracles. The might of God as manifest through miracles. And I believe, I even speak prophetically, that we're about to see a brand new hunger for the miraculous power of God. There is a desperation that God has been looking for from America for centuries, and it's just arrived in the earth in this way. But God's historic response to desperation has always been the outpouring of the miraculous. See it in the scriptures. There is a pattern. Things get desperate in the planet. God pours out his power. People get complacent and dishonor his power, and then they get desperate, and then the power of God comes back. We are about to see a brand new release. It's going to be like the latter rain movement is going to be like the outpouring of Pentecost is going to be like the voice of healing but this is going to be the most creative revival that America has ever seen It's going to be upon the back of the creative technicians that can reveal and that can help us see the glory of God and see the miraculous power of God anywhere and everywhere he says also not just the gift of miracles, the ministry of miracles. And I'm preaching to you because what I'm aiming to do is stir a new hunger in you for the gifts. These cities are going to be in such desperation that they're going to need a different type of Christian. They're going to need an uncommon Christian. They're going to need a Christian that boldly and bravely flows in everything that Jesus flowed into. The Christian, the Christ gens are on their way to a new bravery. He says to another prophecy, this is the divine ability to speak forth whatever God has declared, to declare and utter forth. And there is even right now, oh we, there is even right now a spirit of timidity, a spirit of almost shame and fear that has come upon prophetic people around the world. Because they're being criticized, they're being critiqued, they've been ostracized for not knowing what to do and what to say. But I declare that there is a new boldness coming upon men and women to prophesy. The Bible said the lion has roared, who can but fear? The Lord God has spoken and who can help but prophesy? And there is a brand new depth a brand new range, a brand new height of the prophetic spirit right now in the earth. And he's revealing Jesus at a rhythm and at a rate that we haven't seen in America in, another, in, in a long time. Revelation 19.10, worship Jesus because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy. And I declare the tongue of the learned upon you, that your tongue is being loosed to utter forth the parables and the mysteries uh, of the Spirit of God, even the prophecy of Scripture. We're about to see some very unusual and unique, distinctive manifestations of the prophetic gift. We're going to find that God is going to give you the right Scripture that will have a word of knowledge in it for human beings around you in excruciating pain, in agony, in their conditions and in their way. Now, the Bible also says that there is a discerning of spirits to another, the discerning of spirits to another discerning of spirits. There is a great need in the earth to know the difference. We, we, we have to understand what's motivating what behavior, what's motivating in action. We've got to be able to perceive prognosis by the spirit. We've got to be able to diagnose by the spirit and not so that we can judge and not so that we can bash, but so that we can have the power to heal. If you have the gift of discerning of spirits, you should also be committed to healing and helping what you perceive. 
healing and helping what to perceive, but also warning from danger and warning from deception and warning from the trickery of the devil. I was studying yesterday when the apostle Paul but put said, but put on the whole armor of God that you should be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. And he said to put on the helmet of salvation. I believe that there is a brand new crowning of the appreciation for salvation. And then he said to put on the breastplate of righteousness. That that governs and guards the torso is the righteousness uh, that the Old Testament priest tried to make up. But Jesus gave us with his death on the cross. And then he says take the shield of faith that you would be able to quench the fiery darts of the devil. And then he said let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Wherever you see feet, you're going to see the moving of the gospel, the itinerancy of the gospel. And here's my personal favorite. He said, and then uh, if you've got the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, now what you need is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so as we take a hold to these gifts, I believe it is the sword of the Lord in the earth. We are not a weaponless people. I believe God is saying we have have to pick up what he's armed us with to begin to come back what the devil's got planned after this the sword of the spirit which is the word of God then he says uh, at the latter part of this to another diverse kinds of tongues the ability to understand and grab a hold of language and communication from the Holy Ghost may there be a baptism of different language in your life and I'm not just talking about glossolalia. I'm talking about the expression of different realms and streams of influence, knowing how to talk and knowing how to hear and knowing how to respond. We're going to have a lot of pain after this. But if we rise up in power, we're going to have to speak all kinds of experiences. Hey, all kinds of expressions, all kind of languages, the empath, the empath. The empathy of the spirit of God upon men is going to flow through the speaking with tongues. Now, of course, being a classically rooted, trained, fundamentally Pentecostal believer, I believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost. One of my main ministry emphasis is making sure that men and women, boys and girls, understand the nature of the Holy Ghost and his desire to be in the belly and to be in men. May an outpouring of the in, I feel it right now, of the infilling of the Spirit of God be born all around the world. Of the world. May your children receive the outpouring of the spirit unto speaking with tongues. May your husbands, your, your wives, your cousins, your, your friends, your, your college roommates receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the same way that I received it in my living room. I believe that hundreds of you can receive the ministry of the Holy Ghost in yours. He also says that there is a need for the interpretation of tongues, this full gambit of supernatural activity, this full gambit of power resources, the arsenal of the Holy Ghost in the life of the Christian. And he says this very unique thing as we turn. But all these, every one of them, worketh that one and the same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And here's why. In verse 12, for as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being many are on one body still, so is Christ. For we, by the spirit, were baptized into one body. Whether we were Jews or Gentiles, bond or free, we were made to drink of one spirit. Here is our closing thought. Because the body is not one member, but many. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your people are watching all over the nation, I loose and release the kind of authority and the kind of visitations and the kind of experiences with God that makes men explore different administrations, different uh, 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 moving types of the Spirit of God. May your mind and heart, even your belly, come out of a relationship with complacency and may the gifts of the Spirit begin to flow easily 
easily and consistently in your life. The nine gifts of the Spirit of God into New York City, hey, into Chicago, into Louisiana, into D.C., into every city watching. May there be a divine outpouring, even in the house, a divine outpouring, even in the house, a divine outpouring. Yeah, those that be planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. I declare over you that you are not losing your roots, that the enemy's plan to destabilize you at the root level is being counteracted by consistent visitation and habitation by the Spirit of God. We're getting to know him in a brand new way. And I declare the differences of operations, the differences of administrations are flowing and we're going to see the full beauty of the body because we're the body.